Hey, it's Dry Bear. Dragon's Dogma 2 is an immersive world that gives back as much as you ask of it the more time you spend. But as always with any game you're going to spend hundreds of hours playing around in, you want to make sure that you have the best settings for the optimal experience. So today I'm going to walk through some of the best performance settings to make sure that you are running at the best FPS that your hardware can manage, whether it's console or PC. And then we're going to switch gears and I'm going to make you aware of all the best settings inside of the audio and game settings that can really make a big impact impact on the experience that you have. Well, let's start off with performance because it's a big issue going on right now. Some people that are just at min spec or below min spec, even people that are above min spec are having tons of performance issues with this game. And it applies for both console and PC. But I've done some benchmarking myself and looked at a lot of the discussions online around how the performance is being managed through the in-game settings. And the one setting that seems to have the biggest impact on your overall FPS is going to be the shadows on the settings options. And this tends to be the case in any game that has realistic graphics with lots of foliage. Anytime you have a shadow systems, they can really run amok and cause a lot of problems. So if you are having performance issues, the first place I would look before you change anything is go to the shadow quality and shadow cache and move these down to medium or low and see how that impacts your overall FPS. Because for some people, that setting by itself is enough to fix their issues if they are above the minimum spec. Now, if you have a decent machine and you're above the min spec, you'll want to play with VSync turned on, dynamic resolution turned on, and the DLS implementation in this game is actually quite good, and so most of the settings you'll have for DLSS with DLSS on is going to be pretty effective. If you're only having minor to moderate issues, you can play with quality or balance, but if you're having more FPS issues, you can switch to performance, and some people even said that the auto setting on DLSS gives better FPS than the rest. However, if you are playing on a weaker machine or you're you're near min spec or having tons of issues i would recommend capping the texture cap at maximum two gigabytes turn off dynamic resolution turn off vsync and set shadows to the lowest possible and if you are playing on pc there's also all the third party options that you have for improving game performance like the windows built-in game mode if you are on windows running the game in a smaller resolution and then scaling it to full screen with a borderless window kind of setting though it doesn't seem that most of the benchmarks change much between between different resolutions in game. And of course, if you have option to make setting changes in your OS, you can allocate more cores on your CPU. This game is primarily CPU hog heavy, so focus on that if that is something you have to play with. Next, let's look at audio settings. This is a big part of this game. Now, if you're a Dragon's Dogma 1 veteran and you really enjoy the banter and silliness of all of the pawns, then you can just leave these on by default. Though I do recommend switching to the correct audio output device. And then if you do have the DLC option for the original sound effects and original background music for the first game, you'll be able to change those here with the, the add-on music tracks and add-on sound effects in the settings options here. And the dynamic range does work pretty well, but if you're someone who doesn't like the pawn voices and all the chatter, they have made it optional to be able to change the enemy voices, the pawn voices, the player and NPC voice volume, and you can even just mute these if you want. Your pawns will be constantly talking and interacting with you and interacting with each other and creating this kind of vibe. But if you don't really want that kind of, you know, yapping going on, if you can't handle the yapping, you can just change that. And same thing goes for the enemy voices as well, especially bandits or humanoid enemies. They will talk quite a lot and will be a lot of banter going on between them and you on top of it. Next on to game settings. I, I personally like this a lot. Minimap rotation. I get really confused when minimap rotation is toggled on. And what this does is the minimap is, is fixed to your character's facing location. So as you turn your character, the minimap will rotate with you so that your arrow is always pointing in the direction you're going uh, rather than being more of a fixed rotation. This drives me nuts because I actually just get completely spun around. I just preference thing. I like having this off, which means that the minimap will be fixed north, south, east, west. It won't move. And the icon, the arrow for my character will move instead, which is a lot easier for me to find my orientation as I'm moving around. Next is auto sheath. What this does is that when you're pulling your weapon out, which you can do with L1. Uh, if you're on controller, you can bring it out, or if you just do any 
any combat action on PC or controller, you'll be able to bring out your weapon. And then after some time, it will sheath and, and uh, go away. And this is actually quite useful because a lot of the characters in Dragon's Dogma 2 will become aggressive if you walk near them with a weapon out. It's almost comical how aggressive they get. You'll walk by random guards or people in a town. If you have your weapon out, they'll freak out and run away. And the guards will walk up to you and start talking trash because you have your weapon out. Having auto sheath, I think, is really nice because it means that you can actually have this go away automatically so you're not worried about constantly sheathing your weapon so you don't cause problems. Next is inventory management options. And I wish they had more of these. There's actually a system that existed in the first game where you could equip from your storage and put things back into your storage when you swapped. They didn't include that in this game for some reason. It drives me nuts. But these two settings are actually something that you want to be aware of on how they work. Priority of materials to combine and destination of combined items. When you are playing Dragon's Dogma 2, you will be able to craft items from the materials you have in your inventory. When you bring up the craft screen, the game will always try to pull materials from your entire party when it can, so that you don't have to worry about crafting with the right person, the right pawn, or the risen targeted to get the, the uh, final crafted material that you're looking for. So what you can do is you can change this setting to be either the player or the pawn on who it prioritizes to pull materials from first. Personally, I like having this on player because it like lighting. I like reducing my load when I craft. So it tries to take from my inventory instead of the pawn inventory, which I know I have kept separate. But some people like having it where they, they pull from their pawns first so that they can lighten their pawns or they don't have to worry about their in inventory changing as much. Destination of combined items is another personal preference and you have two major options here. First is that when you combine an item and craft something new, by default, it will go into your inventory. So even if you have this set to pawn, it'll pull the materials from your pawn's inventory, but the final crafted item, like a potion, will end up in your inventory. And I actually prefer this because I, what I, the way I played the first game is I would go to the inn, dump everything that I have on me, can combine from the inn and put all the items in my inventory that are final combined items, you know, arrows, consumables, potions, elixirs, the things that I actually use in combat, I put them all into my inventory and I put everything else in the pawn inventory or in the storage. But you can actually set it so that when you combine an item, it goes to the storage instead of your inventory, which can be useful for crafting things and putting them away and not worrying about holding on to so many things and managing your inventory. The only downside here is that if you have the materials to craft something that you need right now, it's going to go to item storage instead of your inventory, which means you won't be able to use it right away. So if you use this option, it can be nice for space saving, but you will have to be aware that if you need to craft something on the spot for immediate use, you won't be able to have access to it. Next is the interface settings, and there's a ton of these in here that are super nice that you can customize to your own preference. You can actually disable the whole HUD if you want. You can make the HUD uh, toggle in and out based on whether it's available. So if the mini map is available, because you're in an area where the HUD is on, it'll turn on auto. Having some of these things turn off can be useful, like the dialogue options from enemies or the dialogue options from pawns when they talk. I think they did a great job of making this fit in the world, so I leave this on. But you can also separately customize all of the pop-up text that you get, the lower thirds and side text when a quest progress updates in the top left corner. When you go into the middle, you get the lower third or like the, the banner message in the middle of the screen that shows the location you go in. And then obviously when you loot things and they drop or you get XP, all of those are really nice, but you can turn those off if you want. So that never shows up and never blocks your screen. If you really wanted to, you could turn off the reticle for both normal aiming and magic aiming with any incanted spells or magic archer, uh, archer spells that come out that show you what the target is going to be hit if you ever wanted to play with that off. Under controls, there's a couple things to look at here that are super useful and that's going to be run type and toggle hail so these ones are, i mean obviously you can change your controls if you want but these are the two that i would consider looking at the run type is whether you want to hold to sprint or whether you want to toggle sprint and the way they did it in this game is actually quite interesting you have two different ways to sprint at least on controller you can push in your left analog and it'll start the sprint and that is a toggle and then you can also press the circle or b button on uh depending on what controller you're on to start 
that. And that will just be either a toggle, which means you turn sprint on, you turn sprint off. Some people, depending on the size of the game and how much they run, they like having this on a hold, especially for combat, so they don't burn out their uh, stamina while they're running around in combat. Or a toggle if you're out in the world running around to clear the area that's around you. Unfortunately, you will burn stamina even when you're out of combat in this game. You only don't use stamina when you're in a town. So it depends on um, what you feel about that, how you would set the setting. And the next one is going to be the toggle hail, either hold or press. So this one is there are going to be two interactions that you can have with most NPCs and some specific objects like a rift stone, where you can hail the object or you can hail the person or you can trigger dialogue with them as well. And Whichever one you have set to press or hold, the opposite option will be the opposite combination. So whether you want to hail the target by holding the button and then you talk to them to trigger dialogue with the button press, or you want to hail them by pressing and then you want to hold to talk to them. It depends on whether you want to trigger the dialogue here. Personally, I like hold because I like, I'd rather just be able to walk up and talk to them by pressing the button. And then if I want to hail them specifically, which to me happens far less, I will hold it to do that. Next, I recommend taking a look at all the camera options you have available, things like the speed of the camera separate from the aiming. They have so many different sliders in here that you can mess around with, and you can also control the mouse speeds and the uh, controller cursor camera speeds separately, which is a super nice touch and is always good when they include in a game. All of these cameras and motions can be controlled separately for inverted versus normal and the speeds that they have, and you also want to look at camera distance. This is something that we don't get in every action game, so it's super nice that they included it in this one, but you can actually control how far the camera is from your character to give you a little bit more view of the surroundings. It's not a wide range, but if you're someone that likes to see more, you can go up higher. Or if you're someone that doesn't mind being up close to the character, you can have it lower. I believe by default is in the middle, and I personally like having it higher. And if you also have gyro aiming or motion sensor function, you'll be able to control that here. I have it turned off because it drives me nuts. And the other two settings I want to talk about are camera tracking and auto adjust. Camera tracking will make sure that it will always be behind your character, and I recommend turning this off. So what this does is that when you're moving around, when you move, the camera will try to be behind you. So if you start walking in a direction, the camera will automatically track behind you and follow you in a direction. The reason I recommend having this off is not only are you gonna be wanting to run in a different direction than you're looking, so you can watch people that are chasing you, but there's also a ton of stagger and tremble and knockdown and CC in this game. And when your character is locked, it becomes a lot more cumbersome to mess with the camera um, if the camera is set to automatically move behind you when you're moving. So if you're not moving, the camera gets kind of annoying, so I like turning this off. Auto adjust just makes it so that when you go up or down in elevation, the camera will adjust for you, and I think this system works well, so I recommend having this on. And that covers all of the best settings and options for Dragon's Dogma 2. I hope you're enjoying your playthrough, and I'll see you in the next one. If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video video gets seen by more people and don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.